rare are those weeks when the sermon just flows freely from the texts that are appointed for the approaching Sunday. I, I cannot speak for other preachers, but most weeks I have to climb through the ropes, enter the ring, and start wrestling with the Word of God, which often ties me up in knots. When I was a boy, I used to have regular wrestling matches with my cousin, Rob Shive, who was one day older than I. One day older, but always much stronger. Most of the time, he would get me pinned to the ground and refuse to let me up until I hollered, calf rope. Yeah, calf rope, that's what you had to say, calf rope. Yep. Don't know why, but that's how you did it. Preparing sermons is a bit like that. You have to get down and dirty with the text, praying that it will not get you in a half Nelson, pleading for mercy, hollering calf rope. <laughs> this is especially true on this, the second day of Advent, Sunday of Advent, when John the Baptist appears in the wilderness, tracks his muddy sandals across my study floor and yells in my ear, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. His locust-scented breath and his mangy coat of camel's hair are difficult enough to bear, but his message is even more off-putting. Repent, he says, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. I don't know about you, but that's not the message I want to hear this time of year especially. I want to be told to have a holly jolly Christmas, to deck the halls with boughs of holly, to join the rejoicers who are rocking round the Christmas tree. Failing that, I would prefer to have John direct his importunate rhetoric toward other people, not toward me. He did a number on the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they came from Jerusalem to hear him preach his baptism of repentance. He called them a brood of vipers and told them to not count on their family relationship with Abraham to secure their place in God's coming kingdom, bear fruit worthy of repentance. He told them, that's telling them, John, that's the way to go. They're nothing but a brood of vipers. But I don't want John to stop there. No, I want him to go further. Now, John, tell all those people who voted for the president-elect to repent too. They seem to understand the concept of repentance. It means to turn round and face in a new direction. Tell them they're headed down the wrong road. Those folks want to abandon efforts to reduce carbon emissions after the warmest year on record. They want to repeal the Affordable Care Act while millions of people depend on it for their health care. They want to tear up international treaties that took years to negotiate. They're even willing to slam the door in the faces of desperate refugees and to divide millions of families who have lived in this country for decades. That's a change in direction, all right, but John, I don't think it's the direction that you had in mind. Surely you meant for people to align their lives with this kingdom you talk about that is coming near. Someone's coming, you say, John, someone who makes your baptism with water pale by comparison. Someone with a blowtorch in one hand and a winnowing fork in the other. Someone who will baptize with Holy Spirit and fire. Do not send that someone to my house, John. No, <laughs> send him to people with whom I disagree. People who really need to repent. 
people who lack my vision, my intelligence, and my superior insight. But John the Baptist doesn't move a muscle. He stands there dripping Jordan River water all over my carpet and points a long bony finger right at me. You let that someone handle those other folks. I'm talking to you right now. You with your nose in the air and your multiple diplomas on your wall. You with your fancy laptop and your retirement savings plan. You with your viperous confidence in your own religion. Don't presume you have John Calvin as your ancestor. <laughs> Bear fruit that is worthy of repentance. You see what I mean? You, you see what happens when you enter that ring with texts like these. You end up like Jacob at the ford of the river Jabbok, pinned to the ground and ready to holler, calf rope, let me go. This is more truth than I can handle. And it's more truth than my congregation can handle. Can't I just tell them that Jesus is coming as the little child of Bethlehem, gentle Jesus, meek and mild? Aren't there any passages that mention the little drummer boy? <laughs> Why is he not in the lectionary? You see, what I have to contend with week after week, year after year. The writer to the Hebrews was not exaggerating when he wrote that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's also a heck of a wrestler. I have to wriggle like a viper some weeks to get out of its grip. John the Baptist might not be welcome this time of year, but we do need him we need him to remind us to remind the, to take the log out of our own eye before we worry about the speck in our neighbor's eye. We also need him to remind us that as important as the Christmas story is, it's not the whole story of God's dealing with this creation that God loves and also judges. John stands in a long line of prophets who call for repentance and also dreamed of a time when creation would be renewed, when God's good intentions for all of creation will be fully realized. When that time comes, the prophet said, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As hard as it is to hear, John's message of repentance offers hope, for God's judgment is part and parcel of God's love. We are called to repent not merely to escape the wrath to come, but to receive the forgiveness that enables us to live into the prophet's vision. We will not arrive at that vision on our own. And some days it appears that we are taking some steps backward, but that vision will be fulfilled. It will come in God's good time. But by the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a window has been opened through which we can glimpse that coming kingdom. Repentance puts, on the, puts us on the path toward that kingdom, and grace opens that window ever wider. Here's a tip. Do not invite John the Baptist to your Christmas party. <laughs> he only eats locusts and wild honey, and you can't get that at Whole Foods, so don't even bother. He wouldn't come. 
He'd rather stay outside and bellow about the one whose sandals he is unworthy to untie. But don't ignore him either. Without John, Christmas would not be gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.